my name is Scott Rosenberg. I'm the practice leader for cloud technologies and automation at TerraSky. Today, we're going to talk about a really interesting practice that we've been working on a lot here at TerraSky in the DevSecOps world around how we can really make sure that we have secure image artifacts in our environment and how to make sure that all the images that are promoted within our environment from development all the way up until production are secure and we can actually attest to where they come from. Beyond that, we also have images that come in from outside, from third party vendors or from open source projects. And what we need to make sure is that these tools don't have any hidden malware in them that sometimes isn't found in a typical image scan. So today we're gonna to look at a demo of using Cosign, which is a mechanism for signing our images and verifying that they're signed, together with the technology of sandboxing. And in this case, we're gonna be using Prisma Cloud sandboxing technology, which comes from the Twistlock acquisition, and really see how we can integrate this together with a webhook in Kubernetes that allows us to actually make sure that our images that come in are only images that we have signed with specific keys. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So the first step when we talk about this is really going to be building our images. So in this demo, we're actually gonna build three images. Now, the first image we're gonna build, I'm gonna call it good. And they're all gonna be pushed to the same Harbor registry, harbor.vrabi.cloud. On a signing demo, the image name is going to be demo app, and we gave this one the tag good. I'm also going to create one called no sign, and this is going to be our image that we're not going to sign um, throughout the demo. And we're also going to create a third image here, and this one is going to be a bad image. This image actually contains within it some malware. It actually, it actually contains a crypto miner uh, inside. But we're basically creating these three container images. Now, the next thing we need to do is push these up to my registry. So in this case, again, I'm using Harbor. So I'm just going to push all three of these images up. So here we go. Let's push the good image. Great. We're going to now push up our next image, which is the no sign image. And that's great. And now we're going to push up our third image, which is our bad image. So all of these are, again, three tags on the same image located within Harbor, but these could just as well be separate repositories, could be any registry we would like as well. So we're gonna use the image package tool here from the Carvel tool set, an open source tool set from VMware, which is a really nice CLI to show us what tags exist in the registry for a specific image. And here we can see we have bad, good, and no sign. Overall, there are three tags. So now let's actually go and sign our good image and our bad image. And for this, we're gonna use a simple certificate key, and it's gonna be a tap cosign is what this one is called. Um, and I'm gonna sign my bad image. And I'm also going to sign my good image here, but we are not going to sign the no sign image. So this will allow us to show a few different use cases uh, later on in the demo. So here we're signing them. And we can see that it says that it's pushing the signature to that same repository where this image exists. Well, our images are signed. So let's look at Harbor again for a second with the same image package command, and let's see what we have now. So now we can see that we actually have five tags. We have the three we had before, and we also have another two. And these are SHA-256 minus a long SHA dot SIG. SIG stands for SIG store, which is the project that runs Cosign. And the SHA that's actually in that name of the tag is actually the SHA of the good image and the bad image. And the reason we're using SHAs is because that is something that is not changeable. So we know that we will always be targeting the exact artifact that we want because tags are mutable. We could change what the good tag or the bad tag points to. So in this case, we're using the SHA as the name for the signature, which allows us to make sure that we're not gonna override a tag and then think that it's signed, even though it actually isn't, right? So this is a really nice security feature. So once that's done, we're now gonna verify that our images are signed locally on our machine using the cosign verify command. 
I'm going to pass that in. I'm going to give it the public key. We signed it first with the private key. We're now checking with the public key. And we can see that this was signed. The claims were validated and the signatures were verified against the specified public key. So not only do we know that this image was signed, we also know that it was signed with the public key that I gave it at the time of verification. And here we can see I'm going to do the same thing for my bad image. And again, everything is fine because Cosign isn't doing any security checking, any vulnerability checking. It's purely signing our image. So we've got that done. Now, what we're going to do is I built a small shell script here that's going to basically go and run our Prisma Cloud sandboxing. And what this is going to do is I passed in an array of two images, and we're basically saying that for every image in this array, we're going to run through the Twist CLI, which is the Prisma CLI here. We're going to run the sandbox command, and I'm going to point it to my Prisma Cloud instance. Give it the username, the password I passed in through an environment variable. And here I'm setting the analysis duration for 20 seconds, but usually we would do about two minutes or so is the average for a good check. Um, but just for this demo, we shortened it up. And what this basically does the sandboxing is that it runs my container in a sandbox. So it runs it in an isolated sandbox and starts to run the time in it. And it starts to actually monitor all the processes happening inside. And this is really important because sometimes when we get an image from outside, it may not have any vulnerabilities in it, but it may have some, let's say, startup process that that startup process is going to do something really bad. So we can see here that it was signed and we have the link to our analysis report and we can see that it passed. So the next thing we did was we basically say, great, the answer was that this passed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign it again. And you can see that the key I'm signing with is this sandbox cosign key. I'm actually signing it with a different key here. So we're actually going to have two signatures on this image in our case. So it's getting signed. Everything is good. Now our bad image, we can see that it's sandboxing it. We can see the STD out that's coming from the container that's running in the sandbox. Can actually see the crypto miner running. Maybe I'll make a little money off of this. 20 seconds, who knows? And this is running a crypto miner right now. And basically what will happen is in a few seconds it finishes and we can see that we failed. And we failed because of a crypto miner detected within our image. And we can see that we get an exit code of one, which doesn't equal zero, and therefore it is unsafe and it will not be signed. So this is something that we could do in our CI CD pipeline, for example, and decide if we're gonna sign an image or not. So now that we've come and actually signed our image, that's good. And on our bad image, we haven't, we can see that the verdict was failed. So, and that isn't signed. What we'll do next is actually go and look at what this shows us in our Harbor registry. So we can see again, not signed, now let's try and see what actually happened here at the back end. So let's run the image package command again. Well, actually first, you know what, let's verify it. So here we're gonna do a cosine verify in our good image with our sandbox cosine public key. And here what we can see very clearly, this verifies, everything is good just like we got with our previous one. But if I run the cosine verify now on another image, let's say in this case, the bad one with that sandbox cosine public key, which remember it is signed with that first key here, it failed to verify this signature. And therefore we're gonna get a fail here and it's not going to pass our verification step. And this is a really easy way to add signatures along the way throughout our supply chain that will make sure that everything passed through our gates. So what we're gonna do is we have three Kubernetes clusters in this demo. So the first cluster, we're gonna create a namespace called demo image verification in my test cluster. I'm also gonna do the same thing here, but in a second cluster. And this cluster is gonna have a different policy. And this one is gonna be called the dev cluster. And we're also going to create one in my production cluster. So 
Again, this is just to show the type of configuration we may see by a customer. Now, test dev and prod, we're probably going to have different configurations in each. So let's try and deploy our three images onto the test cluster. So again, we have our no sign that has zero signatures to it. We have our dev one that is signed from the first key, but not from the second one. And then we have our production cluster that is signed by both keys. So here I'm telling it, please run this image, the good image in the demo image verification namespace in the test cluster. And well, it ran. So let's try now to run another image. In this case, we're gonna try and run our bad image. And we're gonna call the pod here, bad. And great, it was created. Now let's see what happens with our no sign image. So here we're going to create this again, same kubectl run command, just every time giving it a different image tag here. And here it's going to be very interesting. What happens? Well, the pod gets created. And this is what typically happens in a Kubernetes cluster. All of our images, if it has access to the image registry, it's going to pull, it's going to run. But in this case, we're going to try now on the dev cluster. And on the dev cluster, we've introduced an image policy webhook, which comes as part of Tanzu application platform, an amazing platform from VMware that can integrate all of these sandboxing and cosign tools, as well as image building and really give us from source to URL in an amazing way. But here, we're just going to use this webhook in our case. So again, we're going to deploy the good image into our dev cluster. And we can see our pod gets created well. Well, let's try and now run our next image. So again, on the dev cluster, we're gonna run. And in this case, it's gonna be the bad image. So let's see what happens. And here, let's press enter. And this gets created as well. But we're gonna now try and also deploy that third image, which is our no sign image. And here, what's gonna happen is that this image is actually not gonna be able to run. So what we've basically done is put in a webhook and you can see the pod creation takes a bit longer here. We see is we get an error from the server that the image is not signed. And this is coming from the image policy webhook from VMware. This can also be done with other open source tools. This can be done with the image policy webhook from CoSign themselves from the store called CoSigned. It could also be used with, there's a few other tools out there that allow us to do this like Kyverno, for example. But here, we've basically already set a validation policy saying our images need to be signed. And I've given it the signature that I want to verify against, which is that first signature, that tap cosign key. So here, anything that was signed originally, so anything that came into my environment originally, is allowed to run in dev. But our prod cluster may have a different configuration. And in prod, we want to make sure that only things that pass sandboxing, let's say, can run. So here, we're going to run against our prod cluster. And we're going to look here. And our good image is going to run just fine. And our pod gets created. But when I try and create the bad one now, which again is signed, but not with that, for, or not with the second signing key we're going to see that this one is going to fail as well. Because I can set in these image policy webhooks exactly which key it's supposed to validate against. So we can see that it's not signed. From its perspective, this image isn't signed because that public key doesn't match against anything in the registry. So that is a really strong capability where as we go along the process of promoting our artifacts from one environment to the other, we can really do some really cool and really strong security, right? We could say that we first in dev, we go build our image, we sign it. That can then run to our, let's say, test environment where we're going to go and run some initial tests on it, maybe run some, you know, sandboxing, sign that, which will bring it up to the next environment, run some final, let's say, validation tests, maybe do some contract testing. And once that's done, run that final scan. And when that final scan is done, 
we know that our images are secure and that we can run them. I hope this was helpful for you. And if you're interested more in the DevSecOps world and how to build a secure supply chain and how to utilize these tools, please reach out to us at TerraSky. We would love to talk to you and help you in your DevSecOps journey, move along and make sure that your artifacts are safe and secure and signed in a way that you can verify them and in a way that is user friendly. Thank you very much and have a great day.